When will our leaders stand up to China? When will they put freedom above the dollar? And maybe that's a question for all of us, really. I ask because China has now charged Australian writer and pro-democracy activist Hung Yang Hun with being a spy, a charge that carries the death penalty. Now, it's charged this dual citizen after seven months of holding him in detention. In fact, friends in Australia think he's been tortured. And the charges are an obvious stitch-up by a regime that hates freedom. Here is Australian academic Professor Feng Zhongyi, who was himself detained in China. Actually, the first six months was the worst period of, uh, of him. He has been held in a small cell with the light on 20, 24 hours a day and the two guards on shift to stay in the room for 24 hours a day. And then he has uh, regularly subject to uh, continuous interrogation uh, by the secret police and, and deny sleep, deny uh, outdoor activity. As I said, this is not the first time China's detained pro-democracy Australian citizens on dodgy claims that they threaten China's security. What's more, when Canada last December arrested a top Chinese executive from Huawei, the telecommunications company, on suspicion of breaking a trade embargo on Iran, China arrested 13 Canadian citizens. Diplomats said those arrests were just tit-for-tat reprisals. So, no, this latest arrest is not about justice. What does China care about justice? Seems to me this is just a totalitarian regime trying to punish Australia perhaps for not letting Huawei build our 5G network. Or, most likely, it's to crush dissent. And not just inside China, but outside. You see, Australia has 1.2 million Australians of Chinese background, nearly half of them born in China. Obviously, most still have family in China, family that China could punish if their relatives here in Australia speak out. It's not far-fetched. We've seen that already, too. When Chinese students at Queensland University protested for freedom for Hong Kong, they weren't just attacked by other Chinese students supporting the Chinese dictatorship. One set of officials in China then visited his mother and told her to tell her son here to shut up. That's how China works. That's the nature of this regime that's got its tentacles right into Australia and its universities. And this arrest of Yang Hengjun, that is meant to threaten all the Chinese here as well. Chinese who perhaps like to visit China or who have relatives there. Shut up or else. Cooperate or else. Now, given that, Australia's response to this arrest has been pathetic, has been weak. Take the Deputy Prime Minister. Are you disappointed, though, with how China has handled this situation? Well, look, uh, it's not for me to, uh, to say I'm disappointed or not. Uh, the fact is, uh, it's, hap it, it's happened. Uh, there are protocols in place and, they, and processes in place and, and they are unfolding as we speak. We need our strong relationships and links with, uh, with China. Uh, we're making sure that uh, every opportunity is taken advantage of as far as uh, the chapter is concerned. Do you have concern for the treatment of this man? Has he been tortured? I'm not sure. I don't know. You I, don't, I, don't I seem can't very comment. About well, I, well, I can't comment. I, I can't comment because I don't know. The strongest statement I've seen from any minister has been from Foreign Minister Maurice Payne, who says the government is, and I quote, disappointed. Disappointed? Disappointed is when you lose 20 bucks in the street. Disappointed doesn't even come close to describing what we should feel when a hostile dictatorship arrests an Australian writer on bogus charges to scare a million other Australians into silence. Now, Payne goes on. If Dr Wang is being held for his political beliefs, he should be released. If... If... 
Look, I get it. I get that Australia earns big money from China. China's the biggest buyer of our exports. I get that businessmen get nervous jingling the coins in their pockets. But be clear what our politicians are doing here by not speaking out clearly. They are putting money above freedom, above our freedom, above Wang's freedom. They won't risk a dollar by offending China. I think we should be ashamed, particularly given what's happening in contrast in Hong Kong. Now, there they've got a former British colony, much smaller than us, just 7 million people, and it's already got China's hands on its throat. It's already officially part of China again. Yet Hong Kong people, to protect their freedoms, the freedoms they inherited from Britain, like free speech, have repeatedly held huge protests, more than a million people at a time. They have put their lives on the line for freedom, despite knowing that Chinese forces just across the border are training to invade and to crush them, releasing videos to make that point. But here is our government barely daring to say boo to a huge new power that doesn't just threaten our freedoms. Ask Wang, this Australian. China's already taking our freedoms away.